There we go. Everything's ready. I'm ready. <laughs> Let's do this, baby. It's time once again for another weekly college basketball review show. And, well, this is the second one this year, and I've got to say, first one was not this one was a little bit long, but you know, it's all good. <laughs> um, today is clearly Super Bowl Sunday, but that's not the focus of this video. I don't know it is not. It is about a lot of things that have happened over this past week. Um, uh, let's just start off with um, the one that perplexed me the most, which was um, Virginia Tech and NC State. Now both these teams are ranked in the ACC right now. Um, as of right now, they'll probably change a little bit later. Um, at the time, as of right now it's about like 12 Central over here where I'm at. So whenever the polls come out and stuff like that, I'm pretty sure um, NC State will probably be dropped out from the top 25. But yeah, um, NC State went 9-52 and one of their best players was um, without uh, was not there in the game. I forget his name. I'll, I'll get it later. But you know exactly what I mean. Um, yeah, not a 52 shooting. Um, they were abysmal on three pointers, and they only had 14 to in the first half. And you know you gotta. If you really want to be a tournament team, you gotta fix that. Uh, I mean, I I just don't really know about the ACC right now. It's been a it's been a big cluster of things happening, and this just shows that there is some mediocrity in, in the conference right now. Because um, what happened um, a couple weeks ago was that Clemson um, was this close to upsetting NC State, and NC State had to get a three to escape that game. So. I'm calling NC State out right now and saying they're not really going to do much um, as far as the tournament is concerned. Um, even if they did, which I highly doubt, and these kinds of performances are, are why I don't think that you know they're not a top team or anything like that. Speaking of a team who we thought was a top team and was not a top team was St. John's. Y'all remember St. John's when they were like 12-0 and 0 and had like a undefeated undefeated record even though they didn't play anybody in our conference play and you know thought we were going to prove something they beat Villanova put them off their perch but no that did not happen and that did not happen yesterday in Duke. The Dukey Zion went off like he always does. ESPN was gushing all over it. It was crazy. Uh, 91-61, that was just absolutely abysmal St. John's. I do not think St. John's is a tournament team at all. That performance was just absolutely disgusting. Um, you, you know, if you really want to be a tournament team, you got to play better. you got to have these types of... you got to have these types of good performances. As a, well, I don't know what's going on outside. you got to have better performance. Um, just you got to be better all around when it comes to beating these top two teams, and St. John's is just not one of those teams. It's, I don't think they will be this season. I think they'll be they'll get to the tournament probably. Um, but who knows? Who knows about St. John's really? Because it it just it it's it's not it's not the great. Um, the Michigan School. Let me talk about them real quick. Um, Iowa just basically boat raced Michigan, and it, it wasn't even close. Um, Michigan, Michigan State has lost twice in the past week. Um, they lost to Purdue on Sunday, and I ended up watching that game on Sunday. Um, it was a good game. Um, Michigan really just kind of just Michigan State really just kind of um just came. They weren't really prepared for that Purdue game. They came back, but there was some questionable parts to it all at the end. Like I said, I believe I said it last week. I don't know. Somebody remind me in the comments or something. But yeah, they played. They they, they played well last week. Not well enough. <laughs> and, and this loss now in overtime to Indiana. 
um, really wasn't that great either. Um, they, they've got to figure it out, and you know these top teams are starting to fall. And there's other teams that are hungry at, at the um, at, at the end of it all. You know, Michigan State's got to put all their pieces together. They have a good offense. They have a good defense too. They and they just got to put it all together and. You know, they might be a one seed, maybe a two seed, who knows, it's February now, so crunch time is setting in, and I don't think Michigan State is going to be too worried about it, but, yeah, I don't think they're going to be too worried, but that should be some cause for concern, losing two straight, um, same goes for Michigan, um, wouldn't be too concerned about losing two games in the past couple of weeks. Um, yeah, it, it's going to be like that. Um, and they're, one of their main guys, Langford, he's going to miss the rest of the year. Um, so, um, for Michigan State anyway, Langford, he's going to miss, he's going to be out for the rest of the year. Hopefully that man gets better. And, um, yeah, I'm going to move on here and. Um, won't, well, well, yeah, I probably should, um, the, the top teams not named Duke, you did well yesterday, Tennessee, number one team in the nation, just beat the bricks off of Texas a and and I heard something about Johnny Manziel, um, being like a director of player operations or something like that. I don't, I don't know what it was. I don't, it, it was just the headline that I had counted. It didn't really matter. T Tennessee was going to beat the brakes off of a and anyway. Um, Virginia, once again, played excellent defense. They're setting up for that big matchup with Duke uh, next weekend. You know, the second matchup this year. It's going to be great. And they just, they just really... It's the same. It's the same story with Michigan. I mean, not Michigan, but Virginia. Um, they held Miami to only 46 points, and that's really all you need to know. They did just enough to win the, again, and go on now to uh, North Carolina. They got their revenge from that game against Louisville, where they just got absolutely boat raced a couple weeks ago, and they beat them 79-69. It was a good game. Gotta say, yeah, North Carolina is really picking it up, picking up the pace. They are doing what they do. And I haven't even, um, okay, yeah. The real main thing of this video really is the, uh, well, well, not really, it's not really about Kansas, but it's kind of more about somebody else. Um, they played this week, and I've been ragging on my own damn team for um, for a minute now, for a good minute now. Uh, it, it was okay. So let's just start off with the Kansas Texas game that happened. Um, I want to say it was Wednesday night, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday night, whatever. It was a day during the week, um, during the weekday, and you know Texas came in beat Kansas. You know, Kansas has been playing kind of inconsistent lately. They've been losing some games, and they've lost their grip on the lead in the Big 12. You know, Texas is doing all right. Texas is doing all right. You know, and that's what I'm sitting here thinking. Um, then you realize the rest of the Big 12 is not really, it's not really that good uh, as far as you know. There's, there's probably going to be seven teams that go to the tournament anyway. And Texas will be one of them, I can assure you. But the whole damn conference is inconsistent. Um, West Virginia, the worst team for their 12, beat Oklahoma. And it was a close game until the end, so, you know, I ended up watching the game too. I watched the end of it anyway. And I just noticed that West Virginia, you know, the worst team, the Big 12, they had like, they only had like one or two wins in conference play before beating. Oklahoma, and now you're sitting here telling me, well, wow, wow, Oklahoma can get to the tournament. Oh, my goodness gracious. 
And then you have everybody else, you know, Texas Tech, Kansas beat the brakes off of them. That's not, that's not good. Um, Iowa State's a really good team, they're number 20 right now, they're pretty sure they'll rise up in the rankings, and, you know, the Horns, they were shooting very inconsistently in that game Saturday against the Cyclones, and it, it just, it showed, you know, we came back into the game, but, um, Iowa State was just too much at the end, and really, I'm just kind of disappointed, um, not so much the entire conference as much as I'm disappointed in Texas. Where the hell did you come on and, and say that and, and just act like you're one of the one of these teams that just do whatever you want? You know, I, I'm starting to think. You know, I don't know if some fans are thinking it too here at Texas. I'm a Texas fan. Uh, I'm I'm definitely that way. And you know, I'm 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 feeling I'm feeling it I'm feeling it I'm feeling the motion the fire the fire Shaka Smart. It's been mediocrity for you know four or five years now, and you know now Rick Barnes is flourishing at Tennessee and everything, and this kind of inconsistency is just not what we want here at at Longhorn Men's Basketball. That's not. It's not what we're here for. Um, I mean, Rick Barnes took us to a Final Four, a couple of Elite Eights here and there. You know, took us. He took us places. And while I do respect that from Rick Barnes, you know, we had, we did have to move on and clean the house because you know Rick Barnes really wasn't really wasn't getting it done other than those three or four times that I mentioned of going farther into the tournament. And you know, you, you, you just you just can't you just can't really you just can't really do anything about it. You know, there's nothing there's nothing we can do um, to stay consistent. You know, shooting threes is not going to help you. Um, we do play kind of small ball, and that's fine. But just shooting up shots, you know, missing threes, and everything, and whatnot, and not playing good defense, not getting back interior rebounds, and whatnot, you know, it's just not a recipe for success. And I feel it's gonna happen again. We're probably gonna get beaten by somebody in 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 the first round again. And I don't want to say that, but I mean it's probably true. We're just too damn inconsistent to even really be playing in the first in, in the NCAA tournament. I mean really if we really are, but we're probably gonna get there anyway based on some of our non conference wins. Because conference play it's not it's just not gonna happen and you know really the only big storyline next week is going to be Duke and Virginia and there's not really much else. Um that I can say about the long ones that already has been said, they're too damn inconsistent to really be any anything more than just, you know, another NCAA tournament team. And finally to finish off um, this episode, I'll talk about these mid majors real quick. Um, Buffalo. We all know Buffalo, the Buffalo Bulls. And they have been a really good team this year. Um, but they kind of burst their bubble a little bit by losing the Bowling Green in overtime. Um, I don't really know much about Buffalo. That's how little I pay attention to the mid-majors other than, you know, a select few. But, you know, there has, there's, there's probably going to be some mid-majors that steal um, with these power conference bids this year. You know, some of these other leagues are not looking too great. Um, you know, the Atlantic Ten's not moving too not looking too good. Pac twelve still ain't looking too good. We haven't I haven't heard anything about the Pac twelve in in months. In in in, in like a month or two. Nothing. Nothing for Pac twelve basketball. What's wrong with you? Um, what's wrong with Pac twelve? What's wrong with the Pac twelve? You know, what's wrong with that conference? 
there's just too much instability with the damn conference right now. But I'm figuring there's going to be some mid majors that steal some of these auto bids and then you know you know not auto bids but power conference bids anyway. You know, you know, some of these eight and ten, uh, nine and nine, any conference play type teams, you know, some of those spots are gonna be stolen away from you know, some of these other teams. <sighs> That's really the way that Piggy is going to crumble. We're now in the toughest stretch of the year, um, for all of college basketball. You know, it's February now. It's really this is peak college basketball season. This is the time where, you know, things start getting crazy, people start paying attention again. Now the, today's the Super Bowl and you know, that'll be it for the NFL. Um, I'll probably make a Super Bowl reaction video later. Um, if it's the Patriots, you might as well say Thanos. <laughs> Brady and Belichick, maybe maybe they get out of their Infinity Stones and, and pow, the whole NFL universe is gone. But anyway, maybe, maybe that, maybe we can hear about L.A. for another, you know, nine months or so, or whatever. <laughs> anyway, that's it for this episode this week. Um, I have nothing else, really. Um, there's nothing else really to say. Uh, so, really, there's only one big thing happening next week, and that's Duke Virginia Part 2. So, hopefully, it'll be another good one. The first one was very good when I watched it, so hopefully the second one will be good as well. And with that being said, Big Boy Variety is out. See you guys after the Super Bowl, baby.